Hello YouTubes, this is the BenQ IdeaCam S1 Pro, the most expensive webcam I have never bought. BenQ sent this to me and asked me to do an honest, independent, in-depth review. And that's what it's going to get, like it or not BenQ. What's that? Corporate sellout? No, not at all. Despite that little message saying this is a paid promotion, I don't get paid a thing. I don't get a free camera, so I can be as brutal as I like, and I will be. Right, before we get fired into this, I do want to say a couple of things. I was a little bit dubious on accepting the offer to review this item because I had seen other people's reviews on this, and it didn't look that great. I'm just being honest, BenQ, sorry. But... To BenQ's defence, this is not pitched to the online gamer community. This is more of a professional camera for professional people like me and for people to do in-depth reviews of items that you can't see on a regular camera. I'll explain that later. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the box, see what we have. Well, I do like a tidy box. Meeting smartly, expressing professionally, intelligent conference camera, whatever that means. And on the back, we have a little picture list of everything that it's capable of. Again, not sure what anything is yet because I've not read the instructions and I think I'm going to have to in this one. Right, let's get into it. How do we get into it? Ah, here we go. Oh, more boxes. Okay. This is very Apple-like. Folds out there. You know what? They've taken a lot of time. If nothing else, I've got a really nice box with some very nice dense foam. Guessing this will be our box of our pack of instructions. Quick start guide. More papery stuff. Happy. Whatever. I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Some warranty information. Ugh, come on. Yeah, all sorts of warranty stuff and instructions, which is nice. You always need good instructions. Ooh, look at this. Not sure why this cover is not in the middle. I hope they've not sent me a pre-tested one. The lens looks clean enough. So, we have... We'll get to that in a second. We have our camera, obviously. Well, let's take this whole lot out. Nope, we can't. Let's get a big cable. Now, some of the reviews the reviews I've seen say that this cable is not very long, but again, we'll see how far we can get it from our computer itself. This is, wow, that's heavy. This will be our, that seems unnecessarily heavy. That seems to be all weight. That's obviously our camera mount. This is our camera. Very cute. And we have this little strange lens thing, which apparently goes over the camera with a magnetic suckery thing, like so. This will become important later, okay. And also in the box we have this strange object, which is a remote control with a spinning outer with functions I haven't read about yet. Sort of rubber pad that goes in your desk. Don't worry, we'll get to all this. This is really just what's in the box. We've got a little USB dongle. We've got a couple of batteries. Everything really nicely packed. So that's everything that's in the box. Oh, I missed one thing. Little lens cap, which apparently is magnetic. Not that strong. Here we go. Little privacy cap. Now, again, in other reviews, I've seen people saying, oh, look at this fantastic little magnetic cap, privacy cap. However, if you're not using the cap and you put it down somewhere like there, and then it's time to put the cap on, you have to hunt for the cap. Unlike all my other webcams that get a little attached cap that sits on the top. So to be honest, the magnetic cap thing, it's a wee bit gimmicky. Unnecessary. Just put it on a hinge and we'll be fine. Anyway, what I do have to do now is read the instructions and also 
BenQ did send me an email when I got this, even before I got it, saying that I'd need to download the latest firmware for the camera to improve some of the functionality. So again, this is something that I think that some other reviewers didn't bother to do because it does make a big difference. So let me go and download that, read some instructions, and then we'll get on with some testing. So I have all my hardware plugged in. This is my little puck, remote control. It's got a little battery compartment in the back. Again, magnetic. Put your batteries in, which they kindly supplied, but there is a slight problem with this. This requires a USB dongle, so that's another USB slot taken up in your PC or laptop, which is a wee bit annoying. They could have made this Bluetooth or something. And anyway, we'll get to the functions of this later. It does feel nice, but it doesn't really do any more than a regular wireless mouse. And I've got my mouse and keyboard on one dongle, so we're wasting dongle space. For the camera, I would normally have it mounted here. This is my main monitor. However, the cord is a little bit short, so it has to go on this monitor. I put it side by side my regular webcam, which I will compare it with later on. And the problem is the cord needs to be quite long if you're going to be bringing it down and doing the whole macro thing, which is what that wee lens was for. The other thing I don't like about this mount is, yes, it goes up and down, People were complaining that it might fall out. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall out. I think there is some magnetism holding that in. Yeah, there's definitely magnetism there. It's not hugely strong, but you're not going to be shaking your monitor. That should stay in there fairly solidly. But the thing I don't like, it doesn't do this. This cheapo $30 or $40 webcam goes up and down 360 degrees. It's got my little flippy up privacy cap. This one only goes up and down. It doesn't turn left and right. That's a wee bit annoying. So you have to position yourself in front of it rather than being able to just rotate your cam a little bit. That's a wee bit silly. They could have they could have addressed that a long time ago. It looks nice, feels good, but again, just missing something. And where's the lens cap? Oh, here it is. And the thing is, I'm going to usually keep this face down and it's got a nice fuzzy felt surface to stop the lens getting scratched. But if you end up putting that down on top of garbage, as you will, then you might end up scratching your lens. So defeating the whole point of keeping your lens clear. Okay, moving on. Instructions or lack of. Now, you do get the quick start guide. It tells you how to plug everything in and stick it in your monitor. Fairly self-explanatory. You don't need a massive quick start guide for that. The problem is there's no instructions to use the software, the Inspire software. And I've had three days to look for it on their website and I couldn't find any. Why do I have three days to look for it? Well, let me fire up the camera and this is what it looked like straight out the box. Plug it in. Just, just check this out. For comparison, you're watching this on an iPhone with the iPhone mic, okay? Let's go over to Inspire. Welcome to the BenQ IdeaCam S1 Pro and as you can probably tell, the audio delay is horrendous. So, I contacted BenQ on Friday, this is now Monday, finally got a reply today, asking them, is there some sort of software issue, is there another update I can do? And they basically got back to me asking for my whole PC spec, which they're not getting, right? I run live streams, or I was running live streams, every Sunday night with up to 10 cameras, webcams, Wi-Fi cams, even iPhone cams with with a Wi-Fi app, no delay at all. So don't blame my PC, you sort out your software. So instead of putting you through that horrible audio delay, I will fix that post edit. It's gonna be really awkward for me to make the video, but it will look okay for you. And hopefully down the line, BenQ will fix that audio. It might just be new software or whatever, but passing the buck like that is nonsense. If they didn't know the problem existed, then they didn't test it properly, right. On with the video and see what features this camera has. Obviously, I'm not very enamoured with it, but let's continue. So, we're back in the BenQ cam. As you can see, it is okay. I actually think the image is better the further back I go. 
but the picture to me looks a little bit soft and the colours, especially in my locos, are a wee bit washed out. Let's see how the autofocus works. I can see a bit of hunting already. I hate hunting, but we can switch that off or at least we can switch off the autofocus. But let's see how it focuses on this. Yeah, not too bad. Back to me. Come on. Focus. Not the best. Wow, come on. Oh, finally. So, I know that autofocus is depending on picking up the majority of the image it's seeing. And it's okay there, but again, focus. Focus. I would probably have to cover most of the, the image. There we go. It's not bad, actually. It's not bad. I have been testing this for three days, and I wasn't that impressed. So let's have a wee look at this. Puck. If you spin the outer wheel, it should zoom. There it does. Should also focus. But even at that, you can see it's a bit grainy because, after all, we're not zooming a lens. We're just really just stretching the image. It's a digital zoom. If you know about zooming, you don't get a true zoom unless you've got a big... DSLR camera, let's face it, with a lens that goes in and out. This is just a, this is really just an image stretch. But it's still going to be handy later on, I think. Okay, what other buttons do we have on this? We have this button here, which I believe is, uh, actually, I don't know, because no instructions. So I'm going to guess that that's just a focus on something and fixed focus, maybe. I have no idea. Let's press it again. I think it's maybe just focusing. You, you possibly saw a little square in the middle. Possibly not because it's only the user end that sees it. But there's a little square with a cross in the middle of the screen when I press that button. And I think it's just focusing on the center. On the other side, you've got autofocus, manual focus. So if you want to hold the focus, I guess, up close, you could do this. And that should stay at that focus. If I bring this back up to where it was, it should be in focus. Switch it off. And then it'll auto focus. Yeah, it's not too bad. Other buttons, threes, for whatever reason. So obviously the, free, the, the frame is frozen, the picture's frozen, but you can still hear the audio. So you're not going to get any, you know, sneaky comments without that. If you're going to freeze an image, you kind of want to mute it as well. Let's unpress that, or press that again. Beside that, you've got the mute button. So presumably it's muted now, I hope. And we should be back on again. And in the center, it's got the camera button. Press that to start, stop recording. I think I'll try it. But if I press it, then, then you won't be seeing the rest of the video. So I'll leave that on for now. So, oh. <laughs> Whoops. I must have pressed the freeze button. To be fair, it's designed to sit in a desk, not to hold up like that. So that's back in the desk. Right, let's move on. Let's find some redeeming quality in this camera. How about the flip down mode so that you can see what's happening on the desk, which is part of the reason I would use this is it would be for working on the likes of this. If I'm doing a a repair and I want an up close and personal view, then check this out. It's actually not a bad feature. So I'm going to flip the camera down to the desk and it automatically turns it the right way around, which is nice. And presumably we can still actually bring that up a little bit. Don't need to see my hairy legs, but hey, and we can still use the zoom in and out feature. And we can use all the features on the, the little puck. So autofocus. Manual for I don't know. I don't know if I'm changing it to autofocus. It doesn't really tell you. It just does stuff on the screen. So is that autofocus on or off? Who knows? 
Now that's not a bad feature. Camera quality is not too bad. I do have a lot of light on the subject and it's still a bit grainy, unfortunately. So that is one feature, but while we're at this, I'll show you what the little macro lens does, okay? Which is this little doodah here. This goes on top of the lens. Now, yes, it is really just a, it's just a little magnifying lens that goes on top of the camera lens. But you can only use it up close, so I need to remove this from its stand. Bring it down with the very short cable. There's my fat belly. Put this in. So I just watched that section of video back and as you probably noticed when I put this little lens over there the audio disappeared which means the microphone for this camera is on that black section there so obviously when you put the lens over it you don't have the audio going into the mic that is really bad design anyway let's continue how about this BC rail number? So you see those little plates along the sides? I don't know if they say anything. Let's find out. Okay, what other features do we have? We have... We have, um, we can flip it for whatever reason you would want to be upside down. We can flip it left and right, mirror it, whatever. I think we're back to normal. We can, what's this button do? It's got an A, which usually means font. We'll click on that and Nothing. Oh, I see. It's I don't know why it's got A and then a line under it. And I'm going to have to keep pressing that until we get back round to where we started. Why on earth would you want that? We've got a ruler. That is pointless because 5 watt, 10 watt, the degree thing, it's, no, I don't get it, because there's no actual measurement there, because it's purely dependent on what you're looking at and how far away you are. If anyone has got any application for this, let me know. We've got angle. I wonder if it, if it makes sense if it was pointing down at the desk. No, I really, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I know this is supposed to be a professional cam, but they sent it to me, so I've got no use for that. We've got a black dot and a white dot. It'd be helpful if there was instructions that would told me, tell me what the black and white dot is, because they don't seem to do anything. We've got a pen tool, so I could do this. Hit the garbage button to get rid of that. Handy for pointing at stuff if you're doing a presentation, but despite all these wonderful features, you can only use it in Inspire. So you could hook it up to like OBS, but it would just be like a basic webcam. Apparently you can hook it up to Zoom, but I don't have Zoom, I don't, I don't use Zoom. So maybe someone with Zoom usage would make use of this, but 
Then Q sent this to me. Presumably they watch my videos. They know I don't use Zoom. So I have to present this review for what I would use it for. Surely that's fair. And for me, I would be using it for possibly live streaming and live demos of maybe reviews and all that kind of thing. Other than that, it would be for up close reviews of new locos, which again, I don't buy. And if you'd watch my videos, you would know that. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find a great use for this. Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with my bog standard Nexigo $30 webcam, okay? Okay, so this is obviously the BenQ. Let me switch over to my trusty webcam, my cheapy job, which looks like this, which I much prefer. Now, to be fair, I have messed about with the settings in this camera to make it as crisp and colourful as possible. But straight out of the box, this is what the BenQ looks like. So I'll tell you what we'll do, just to be completely fair, I'm going to go into the settings for the BenQ and try and get them as nice as possible. And then we'll do a proper side by side. There is one thing, however, that the BenQ excels at, which is the autofocus, which I don't have in my cheapy cam. So the likes of this, I can get right up close and it will zoom in, which is quite nice. That will not happen if I switch to the other cam. It's really got a preset focus of about where I am right now, or from where I am and further back. Whereas the BenQ does have a nice autofocus like that. And that's actually really quite nice. So as I say, let me nip into the settings for the BenQ cam, try and get it as nice as possible and hopefully end on a high note. Okay, back shortly. Okay, we're back. This is the BenQ and full disclosure, I'm running this in OBS. So I'm using the OBS tools to make the image better, which actually works better than the Inspire software, which you can't use anyway if you're running it through OBS, because remember what I was saying before, you have to use Inspire software with it for that side of things. But to be fair, it still works. Other than using the, the zoom in and out thing, which doesn't work unless you're using Inspire, for example, nada. But the autofocus still works, which it will not do with my other cam. Let me switch over to my basic cam. As you can see, that's quite blown out. The picture's a wee bit distorted. Focus back here is fine, but if I'm wanting to show you stuff on a live stream or whatever, I would have to switch over to that, which is actually pretty nice. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And with some messing about with the settings, increasing the sharpness, the contrast, it doesn't look quite so washed out. I can still play about with colors because it's going to look different to everyone who's watching, depending on your monitor settings. So. I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it. And I do believe that the flip down feature still works. So let me just lay down this on the desk facing the way I would watch or look at it. We'll flip this down. And we can still use that. And it auto focuses. That's actually quite nice. I don't hate it. I do want to get the sound issue sorted out though, although it doesn't matter quite so much in this view because you don't see my lips. That's not too bad at all. Okay, not all is forgiven, but certainly some is forgiven. In summary then, I think it's a fairly high quality camera with a lot of potential, but it's not fulfilled that potential yet. I've got some pros and cons. The flip down function works well. Okay, and that is part of the reason I agreed to do this review, because that is one of the features I would be using, especially on a live stream, albeit I can't use all the functions, but we'll get to that in the cons. The autofocus is actually really good, which I don't have in any of my other cameras. 
even my iPhone would struggle with that sort of autofocus, especially up close. So it certainly ticks that box. The macro lens, it works well. It is just a, it is just a little lens. It's it's not mechanically enlarging anything, but it looks nice. And with the little ring light on the cam, it works pretty good. To be fair, I'm not sure how often I would use it, but it is certainly good for highlighting small detail on locomotives and other train stuff okay and also the fact that it is removable without having to lift off the whole mount off of the monitor it just slips in that little magnetic thingy me jig uh, that works fine but getting in getting on to the cons because the cord is about two feet too short you really have to have your pc or your laptop quite close to your camera to be able to move that about or even to have it positioned where you would actually like it I had to have the camera quite close to the PC. Anyway, that's just a cord issue. You can always get a cord extender for that. Biggest thing for me is the software. No instructions for the actual software. And you're limited on using that software with their program. You can't use it in OBS. Apparently you can use it in Zoom, but I don't use Zoom. So if anyone who uses Zoom, let me know. Because some of those features look as if they would be quite helpful in a certain environment, like the ruler thing and the the pen tool, that kind of thing. I'm not doing that sort of presentation, so it doesn't really apply to me. But lack of instructions, that's, that's terrible. No point giving you instructions to set the thing up if it doesn't tell you how to actually use it, okay? And obviously the audio lag is a bit of an issue. Hopefully, again, just a software update and that will be sorted. Is it worth 200 or 250 Canadian dollars. I don't think so at the moment, but with all the updates I mentioned, it could be because it does feel like a quality unit. Now, I did try to be as honest as possible. I ended up kind of liking it, believe it or not. I've been thinking about this for three days and I was hating on it, but it actually does what I wanted it for. This is my first ever review on this channel, and this is not a review channel, this is a train channel. But overall, eh, it will do what I want it to do, I think. And it might do more if they get back to me with an update. So I do, of course, have to leave some links to where you can get one yourself if you want to try it out, prove me wrong. They're also running a bit of a competition. I think it's the first 50 people that sign up to their newsletter get entered into competition. And one of you will one of these win one of these cameras for yourself. I'll leave all the descriptions down below. I think there's an affiliate link as well. I did start this video off not being too positive about it, but I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I don't know if it's worth all the money, but it is BenQ. BenQ make good stuff, and hopefully it'll get better over time. So that's it. That was a bit of a hot and cold review, but we got there, we got there. Right, back to playing with trains. See you soon.